Hello. It's almost over. The semester is almost over and we start one of the most difficult topics we're going to deal with, and that's solving logarithmic equations. So before we start solving, we need to talk about domain. The domain of the logarithm argument. So let's write up here. Log. Base. Argument, otherwise known as arg equals exponent. OK, it's very, very, very important that we check the domain of our equation every time because the argument of the logarithm function, whatever is in the argument. The whole argument has to be strictly greater than zero. Can't be equal to zero, can't be less than zero, has to be greater than zero. That will determine whether or not our answers are acceptable, our solutions. OK, so let's start. We're going to start with some easy, easy logarithm problems and then build up. Log base 6 of x equals 4. What do I do? Remember. I want that bigger. Remember. This number is always going to be the exponent. Logarithms are exponents. That's so hard to understand when you're a student. It was hard for me to understand. My professor would say over and over again, logarithms are exponents, logarithms are exponents. I knew what a logarithm was. I knew what an exponent was, but I didn't know how to put them together. It takes a while, so you just have to take my word for it. Here's our base. Now we want to solve for X. Here's the argument right here. Now, if you remember from when we shifted, if you want to think of it that way, uh, logarithmic equations to exponential equations and exponential equations to logarithm equations, converting back and forth and back and forth. What we did with the logarithm equation was say, OK, base. Raised to exponent. Equals argument. Well, here notice the argument is X, okay? So X equals six to the fourth power. Now we can find out what that is, six to the fourth power. Six carat four, 1296. Quite honestly, if you're doing a paper exam, I prefer that. It's easier to grade. OK, now log. Here's the equation. It's kind of hard to read when I have when I have it um, zoomed in, OK? To this degree, I mean, it's at what is this? Over, over twice as big. 
Yeah, and so it becomes very grainy like that, very pixelated. Log x equals negative one. But what's the base? When you don't see a base, the base is 10. So, when we convert, we say x equals 10 to the negative 1, which is 1 tenth. Or, if you do this in your calculator, 0.1. Ah, the LN. I like to go through steps on this. The LN of X equals three. Well, what is the LN? The LN is just a fancy way of writing log base E. So this is log base E of X equals three, which means X equals e to the third power. Let's just leave it that way. OK, all of these arguments have been just x. So I knew from the start, because of this, no. I didn't actually write it out, did I? Well, darn, the argument has to, I thought I did. The argument has to be strictly greater than one. Let's see, there it is, ha, huh. okay, I'm relieved. There it is. What is that one? We need to take this out. We'll just take it out and ignore this part. I love electronics. OK. So we'll erase. And we'll pretend I never said it. All of these arguments have been just X. And I knew that the argument had to be great, greater than zero. So X has to be a number greater than zero. All of these numbers, six to the fourth power equals 1296, 10 to the negative one equals 1 tenth or 0.1, E to the third power, well, that's about 2.7 to the third power. That's definitely greater than zero. So no problem. But now, now we're going to have to start checking. There are two terms in that argument, 2x minus 8. So we're going to have to set 2x minus 8 greater than 0 and solve for x. Now, I already did this one for you x has to be greater than 4. That means whatever our uh, solution is, it has to be greater than 4. Not 4. 4.1 would be okay. Anything bigger than 4. All right, now let's solve. I'm going to write this again because of the pixelation log 6, base 6, of 2x minus 8 equals 3. So 2x minus 8 equals 8, equals 6 to the third power. Well, what is 6 to the third power? 216? Don't know. 6 carat 3 enter. Yeah! 
Okay. So 2x minus 8 equals 216. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Which leaves me 2x equals 6 plus 8 is 14, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, and then 2. And then to solve for x, I divide by 2, I divide by 2, which is 1, 1, 2. So x equals 112. That's a little bit bigger than four, don't you think? Okay. Yep, okay. Kind of doing it in my head to make sure. All right, now look at this. We have log of x plus log of x minus 3 equals 1. Before we do anything else, we have to find the domain of all this. So, okay, I have two arguments, arg, arg x has to be greater than 0 and x minus 3 has to be greater than 0 so here i'll add 3 to both sides so i'll have x is greater than 3. Okay, two things are necessary. x has to be greater than 0, and x has to be greater than 3. Okay, well, 2 is greater than 0, but it's not greater than 3. So to keep both of these requirements satisfied, we're going to have to go with x must be greater than 3. That's our domain. Now, what we have to be careful of, I don't have to actually write down the domain in set builder notation or an interval, do, no, <laughs> interval notation, but I do have to be aware that my answer had better be bigger than 3. Okay, so now we are going to use the product rule here. We're going to have the log of x times x minus 3 equals 1. What's the base? 10. So x times x minus 3 equals 10 to the 1, which is 10. So x squared minus 3x equals 10. Okay. Well, I guess... I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides and set this quadratic equation equal to zero. Equals 10 minus 10. I usually do the minus 10 in blue. Wonder if I should do that again. Maybe, just to keep everything straight.
Ah, okay. So, x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. All right, let's continue up here. Negative 10 equals negative 5 times positive 2, and negative 5 plus positive 2 is negative 3, and that's precisely what our middle number is there. So that's how I'm going to factor. X, X, minus 5, plus 2. Okay, X minus 5 equals 0. X plus 2 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides. Add 5 to both sides. X equals 5. Subtract 2 from both sides. X equals negative 2. Now we know that can't be true because up here we stipulate X has to be greater than zero because of that domain right there. So no, this is not gonna be true, but what about five? X has to be greater than three. Five is greater than three, last time I checked. So X equals five will be our answer solution. Okay, let's look at what we did. Starting from this first line, we had to calculate what the domain is. Well, if X is greater than zero, but X also has to be greater than three, then we're gonna go for X equal X has to be greater than 3. Then, whenever you have log of an argument plus log of an argument and the bases are the same, you're going to have to use the product rule. Let's write it right here. Product rule. So here we've used the product rule. We've condensed the logarithm into one logarithm with argument equals one. Now, have to write the base because we're going to use it here. 10 to the one power is 10. So argument equals base raised to exponent. And this is always the exponent. Well, we've got ourselves now once we distribute the X, we've got a quadratic equation. So we pull everything over to the side where X squared is positive and set equal to zero, factor. I mean, it was easy to factor. If we could not have factored, we could have used the quadratic formula, not a problem. But we could have solved this and we came up with two possible solutions, five and negative two. Well, X cannot be negative two. So, in fact, negative two minus three would be negative five. That would be a terrible no-no. The arguments of logarithm functions cannot be negative and cannot be zero. So, our answer five is perfect, perfect. Let's go on, do some more. Ah, look at that plus. We're going to be using the product rule again. So log base six 
of x plus 8, excuse me, plus log base 6 of x minus 8 equals 2. Well, we're going to use the product rule. Product. Whoop. Well, yeah, I like that. PRD, product rule. Okay, <clears throat> that'll be log base six. Of X plus eight. Times X minus eight. Equals. Two. Okay, X plus eight. times x minus 8 equals 6 to the 2 power, which is 36. So now these are conjugates. When we multiply them, the middle terms are going to zero each other out. x plus 8 times x minus 8 equals x squared minus 64. And that's 36. So I subtract 36 from both sides of the equation. That'll put a zero over here. Over here, 64 minus 36, oops, there. Negative 64 minus 36 is minus 100. X squared minus 100 equals zero. Now notice we don't have an X term. That's because we would have gotten 8X minus 8X for our middle term, and that would be zero X. So we don't have a linear term. So we have to use the square root method to solve this. Add 100 to both sides of the equation. Negative 100 plus 100 is zero. X squared equals 100. Take the square root of both sides and don't forget the plus or minus. So X equals plus or minus 10. So let's take a look at this. X equals 10. X equals negative 10. I completely forgot to check the domain. And I talked about how important it is. OK, time out to check the domain. You have to check the domain. X plus 8 is greater than 0. So, subtract 8 from both sides. You'll have X is greater than negative 8. OK, X has to be greater than negative 8. Now, X minus 8. See, there and there. X minus 8 it has to be greater than 0. So, X has to be greater than 8. Well, X has to be both, both 
greater than negative eight and greater than eight, the only way to be greater than both is to be greater than eight, positive eight. So, whew, this goes, of course, boom, boom. But this, this works, 10 is greater than eight. So X equals 10. See how it works? See how important it is that we find the domain first. So here we are, x plus eight times x minus eight using the product rule. Oh, I guess this is too early in solving these to abbreviate. So I better write it out, product. If we'd been doing this for weeks on and off, PRD would be fine. But now I'm not going to forget the domain again. Look at those arguments. Log of 4x plus 3 minus log of x minus 2 equals 1. Time out to find the domain. Four X plus three is greater than zero. Subtract three from both sides. Remember, most of the time you solve these just like you would an equation. Divide by four, divide by four. So X has to be greater than negative three fourths. X greater than negative three fourths. Okay, <clears throat> X minus two has to be greater than zero. Add two, add two. X greater than two. So X has to be greater than two. Let's draw the X axis. Big thick X axis, Ooh. Okay, now, negative three-fourths would be on the left because zero would be in here and then two would be over here. We have to have two things going on at the same time and maybe the answer is obvious to you now. X has to be strictly greater than negative three fourths. And at the same time, it has to be strictly greater than two. The only place where the arrows agree is to the right of two. So X greater than two is going to be our domain. Or you could kind of do it in your head. Anything greater than negative, well, if X has to be greater than negative three fourths and greater than two at the same time, then you're gonna to have to go for greater than two. A negative number is always less than a positive number, even if you don't know where negative three fourths is. You know it's to the left of a positive number. Okay, now let's get back to work. We're done with this part. 
but I want to put a box around this. Just to kind of set our domain off from the rest of the problem. There we are. Now look at that minus sign. Ooh, that's a pretty minus sign. You know what that means? It means the quotient rule. Q U O T I E N T R U L E, the quotient rule for logarithms. What does that mean? Well, this is what it means. It means log 4x plus 3 over x minus 2 equals 1. OK. The base is 10. So we know that 4x plus 3 over x minus 2 equals 10 to the 1 power, which is 10. So here we have this. We have, how, how far down can I go? Oh good, all the way down to the end of the page. 4x plus 3 over x minus 2 equals 10. Now, I have to do the following. Multiply both sides by x minus 2. Here I put it over 1 because that's a fraction, and x minus 2. And I don't bother with putting x minus 2 over 1 because 10 is not a fraction. Okay. Now, x minus 2 cancels x minus 2, which was the whole reason to do this. 4x plus 3 equals 10 times x, 10 times minus 2. That will be 10x minus 20. Okay. Now, we can choose to do this any way we want. I can subtract 10x from both sides of this equation so that I get rid of the, 10, the x terms over here. That'll be negative 6x plus 3 equals negative 20. Then I'll subtract 3 I'll sub hmm. there. I'll subtract three from both sides of this equation. So I have negative six x equals negative twenty three. And so divide by negative six, divide by negative six x equals, the negative signs cancel, 23 over 6. Now let's check our domain. X has to be greater than 2. Well, 23 over 6 is definitely greater than 2 because 12 over 6 would be 2. But just to convince you,
Let's get 23 and divide it by six. Yeah, that number is bigger than two. So no problem. We can go with this answer. Well, what if it hadn't been? What if that had been negative 23 over six? We would have had no solution. And that would have been the answer. Sometimes you do get no solution. And that's not a good feeling. You work so hard and then you get no solution. That used to really annoy me. Okay, now this is interesting. Take a look at this. Log base six of X. Equals one minus log base six of X minus five. Well, I'm going to add log base six of X minus five over to the other side. But before I do that, I wanna find the domain. This is the argument of that logarithm and that's the argument of that logarithm. So X has to be greater than zero and X has to be, X minus five has to be greater than zero. So add, five to both sides. And we get X is greater than five. Well, clearly, if X is gonna be greater than zero and X is gonna be greater than five, at the same time, we better go with X is greater than five. So any solution we have is going to have to be greater than five. Now, I'm going to add log base six of X minus five to both sides of the equation. I always say to both sides, and I'm sure somebody is thinking, both sides of what? Well, both sides of the equation. On the left, I'll have log of x plus log, uh, uh, log base six of x plus log base six of x minus five equals one because negative log base six of X minus five plus log base six of X minus five is, boom, that's zero. So one. Now, this is the product rule. You've got log base six of X plus log base six of X minus five. That means you're going to have log base six of X times X minus five equals one. Now, I really don't have room to write product rule on the left. Maybe I do. Be consistent. Product rule. Okay, so argument X times X minus five equals base raised to exponent six to the one power. So X squared minus five X equals six. This is a quadratic equation. So, x squared 
minus 5x equals 6, minus 6, minus 6. Now, 6 minus 6 is 0, but negative 6 equals, hmm, Hmm. Ah. Okay. Negative six times positive one. Negative six plus positive one equals negative five. See, I was hung up thinking, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, three and two. No, that won't work because only one can be negative. Yeah, I temporarily forgot about that. So, boom, 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 x, x, minus six, plus one. We set them both. Wait a minute. I am going to change that to a two. Better, much better. X minus six equals zero. X plus one equals zero. You already know that's gonna be defunct. Minus one, minus one. So X is going to equal negative one. And that will not work. No, no, no. On the other hand, over here, when we add six to both sides, X equals six. Which is greater than five, thank goodness. So I'm going to put a box around that. X equals six. Okay, we're going to be using a slightly different method on this. For all of these equations, we've used the same method. I didn't mention it, but that method is called the definition of a logarithm. Because what is a logarithm? Argument equals base raised to the exponent. We did this over and over again. But this time, we can't. Why not? Because we have all logarithm terms. We're going to have logarithms equal a logarithm. Okay, just so you know. Yay, it's time for a new method. Method. It's called the one-to-one -one property or the property of one-to-one -one functions. Time out for coffee. Ah, okay. 
All right, so yes, domain. Domain, we have three arguments this time. T plus 45. No, I want black. There. T plus 45. T plus 5. And just plain T. Greater than zero, greater than zero, greater than zero. So, this means T has to be greater than negative 45. because I subtracted 45 from both sides. Here I subtract 5 from both sides. So T has to be greater than negative 5. And here T has to be greater than 0. We're going to draw an x-axis. A number line. Way out here on the left is negative 45. Farther in is negative 5. And then you've got 0, obviously not drawn to scale. Now, we know that at t, will have to be greater than negative 45, and t will have to be greater than negative 5, and t will have to be greater than 0. It's only at greater than zero, to the right of zero, where all of the arrows agree. So our domain for this problem is going to be T is greater than zero. Yep. Okay. Now, here we have the quotient rule. Quotient. You can tell because of the minus sign. Quotient rule. When you have a log minus a log, as long as the bases are the same. And yeah, I want to put a little box around Yes. All right, so what we've got here is log base three, log base three of T plus forty five over T plus 5 equals log base 3 of t. Now here's how the property of one-to-one -one functions works. This is the same function, log base 3, log base 3. If you have two logs set equal to each other, it has to be true if they're one-to-one -one functions, and they are. The arguments will equal each other. So T plus 45 equals T 
plus 5. No, it doesn't. T plus 45 over T plus 5 equals T. T plus 45 over T plus 5 equals T. The argument on the left equals the argument on the right. Notice we don't have to bother with exponents. Thank goodness. Okay, so we're going to do what we did before. Multiply both sides by the denominator T plus 5. Put T plus 5 over 1 when I'm multiplying by a fraction and just multiply by T plus 5 when I'm not. Okay, T plus 5 cancels T plus 5. The reason for doing that. So we'll be left with T plus 45 equals T squared plus 5T. Interesting. That's a quadratic equation. I'm going to drag everything over to the side where the quadratic term is positive. Minus T. Minus T. Minus 45. Minus 45. So zero equals T squared plus four T, five T minus T, minus 45. But I've got to put a little curl on the end so it doesn't look like a plus sign. So my T does not look like a plus sign. Okay, now, negative 45. I know it equals nine times five. If 45 equals nine times five. So, negative 45, for me to get a positive four, is going to have to equal positive nine times negative five. And positive nine plus negative five equals positive four. That number right there. So zero equals boom, 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 T, T plus nine minus five. And now, T plus nine equals zero and T minus five equals zero. Subtract nine, subtract nine. T equals negative nine. Add five, add five. T equals five. Well, we know from having taken care of our, our domain already that t has to be greater than zero, negative nine is not greater than zero. On the other hand, five is greater than zero, so five is our solution. Let's look at the property of one-to-one -one functions. Notice we condensed our log, so we have the log of an argument equals the log of an argument. <clears throat> when we have that, log of an argument equals log of an argument, the two arguments are equal. 
and then you solve from there. In a way, it's easier that way. Okay. Another one. Ooh, and we're gonna be using the principle, the, yeah, the property, the principle of one-to-one -one functions, property of one-to-one -one functions. Here we're gonna use the product rule. All right, let me write it out. Log base five of X plus log base five of X minus one equals log base five of six. Okay, I've got to find my domain. There's no X in this domain, so I don't even pay attention to it. This is just the number six. Okay, um, X has to be greater than zero. And X minus one has to be greater than zero. So X has to be greater than zero. And X has to also be greater than one at the same time. Well, if X has to be greater than zero and X has to be greater than one, there, and there, then the only place the arrows agree is at x greater than 1. So that's going to be our domain. Any answers we get have to be greater than 1. Okay, we'll use the product rule because of the plus sign. Product rule. So this will be log base five of X times X minus one equals log base five of six. Cool, cool beans. The log of an argument equals the same log of a different argument. It has to be that these two arguments are the same. Otherwise known as equal. X times X minus one equals six. X squared minus X equals six. Subtract six from both sides because you've got a quadratic equation. X squared minus X minus six equals zero. So we're gonna factor. And again, no, not again. Negative three times positive two. Here we're gonna have negative three times positive two because negative three plus positive two equals negative one. And we have a negative one there. So boom, 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 boom equals zero x, x, minus 3, plus 2. Yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit. 
Their lines are so much better than mine. Okay. X minus three equals zero. X plus two equals zero. Add three to both sides. Minus two, minus two. X equals negative two. Well, let's see what we've got. Aha, X has to be greater than one. That leaves negative two out, doesn't it? But three is greater than one. Yep, three is greater than one. So we can rest comfortably in the knowledge that three is our solution. More, there's more. Ah, but there's, well, obviously there, there are only logarithm terms. LN is just a logarithm. We're gonna be using the, prince, the property of one-to-one -one functions. So let's go ahead and get our domain before we do anything else. X, eh, well, X plus six has to be greater than zero. X minus three has to be greater than zero. And X has to be greater than zero. So, therefore, If I subtract six from both sides, I'll get X is greater than negative six. Add three to both sides, X is greater than positive three. And of course, this will stay X greater than zero. So let's make our quick little number line here. Well, I'm stuck in the blue, aren't I? Okay, negative six, zero, three. So X has to be greater than negative six. X has to be greater than zero. And now I don't think the yellow is going to show up. Um, yeah, just use black. X has to be greater than three. The only place that all the arrows agree are located is to the right of three. So X is going to have to be greater than three. That's our domain. Now we get to work. All right, this is going to be the product rule. So we're going to have the ln of x plus 6 times x minus 3. Now watch. This has got to be the ln of an argument. We can't have stuff hanging out 
in front of it, which means I have to move the two up so that I'll have the ln of x squared. Now I have the ln of this argument equals the ln of that argument, which means the two arguments are equal. x plus 6 times x minus 3 equals x squared. Now we're going to just work it out. x squared minus 3x plus 6x minus 18 equals x squared. So minus 3x plus 6x is plus 3x. This will be x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals x squared. Well, the minute I subtract x squared from both sides, look what happens. Ooh. x squared minus x squared is zero. I don't have a quadratic equation anymore. Instead, I'll just have 3x minus 18 equals 0. Add 18 to both sides of the equation. Negative 18 plus 18 is 0. On the left, I have 3x. On the right, I have 18. And to isolate x, I divide by 3. I divide by 3, so I have x equals 6. Now let's take a look at our domain. Yep, x is greater than 3, so we can go with 6. 6 is greater than 3. The important thing here to notice is that we have to get this to where we have the ln of an argument equals the ln of an argument, not 2ln of an argument. I keep thinking this is bound to get over with, but it just keeps going on. All right, again, again, we're going to have, ha uh, we're, well, we're going to use the product rule, but we're also going to be using the property of one-to-one -one functions. Product rule. Log base 3 of x times x plus 2 equals log base 3 of 8. Oops, almost skipped the domain. x greater than 0 x plus 2 greater than 0, which means I have to move this a little bit. x is greater than negative 2. So, little number line, 
negative two, zero. X has to be greater than negative two. X has to be greater than zero. The only place the arrows agree is to the right of zero. So X has got to be greater than zero. And this is our domain. All right, log base three of X times X plus two equals log base three of eight. Eight is just eight. There's no way to say eight's greater than zero. Well, of course eight is greater than zero, but there's no X here, so we don't have to set up an inequality just in case you were wondering. We dealt with that before, but can't hurt to say it again. All right, x times x plus 2 equals 8. x squared plus 2x equals 8. Subtract 8 subtract eight because we have a quadratic equation. X squared plus two X minus eight equals zero. Now negative eight equals, well, we know that eight is four times two. So four times negative two. If I add those four plus negative two, I'll get positive two, which is what I have here. So that's how I'm going to factor. Plus four, minus two. And again, we go through our thing. X plus four is greater than zero. X minus two is greater than zero. On the left, subtract four from both sides. X is greater than negative four. Plus two plus two. X is greater than two. So, so, um, we know, what do we know? X is greater than zero is our domain. So this guy is gone. This one is gonna be our answer, our solution to the equation. Yay, that's it. Okay. There you go. You've learned all about solving logarithmic equations. You've learned about the definition of a logarithm using that as a method of solving and the property of one-to-one -one functions using that as a method of solving, you are now ready to go on to the word problems. Exponential growth and decay. That's coming next, and then the semester is over. At least as the semester stands right now. The way it's set up, uh, logarithms is the very last thing that we study. Might not always be that way, but right now it is. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.